What's up, everyone? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. So the Packers third OTA session that was open to the media just finished. So in today's video, we're going to go over and recap the biggest takeaways that happened in today's practice. I did just also release a video on the highlights from today's practice. So if you want to go watch that, just click the link right above. And the Packers have been practicing for the last three weeks, but this is only the third session that was open to the media. So every other practice, we don't really know what happened. But of course, when the media is there, um, we get some takeaways from the 11 on 11 portions which aren't allowed to be filmed so that's what we're going to break down today the packers also have mandatory mini camp coming up next week actually one week from today on tuesday starting on june 13th through june 15th so if you're a new viewer here i'd really appreciate it if you went down and clicked the subscribe button um if you want more packers news analysis and updates i'll post videos every single day the packers practice and we get some sort of news and of course other things like roster news um signing salary cap everything green bay packers right here on this channel so a notable player that returned to today's practice who we saw absent from last week's practice was tight end tucker craft and we saw some clips of him uh, some highlights of him in my other video as well tucker craft running some routes doing some blocking drills so nice to see him back on the practice field. Both Kraft and Musgrave have been getting a lot of uh, work in these practices and likely will get a ton of snaps going into this season as they likely will be the number one and two tight ends in terms of their inline slash move tight ends. Then, of course, DeGuar, more of that H-back role. Some players still rehabbing and not practicing are Grant DeBose, Tay Wicks, who we saw um, out of practice last practice as well. So they are still out as well as Donald Levitt and Jake Hansen. Moving over to the starting offense and defense, let's quickly run over the starters which not much has changed this is yeah the third practice in OTAs and this doesn't mean much it's still so early in the offseason but obviously Jordan Love starting at quarterback one and Aaron Jones at running back one that much is obvious Josiah DeGuar is the starting tight end but Luke Musgrave also got a start today because they opened in an 11 personnel they've kind of gone back and forth sometimes they open in a three wide receiver look where Jane Reed is the starting wide receiver in the slot today they went with a two tight end look the 11 personnel with DeGuar and Musgrave as for the wide receivers, the two wide receivers that were out there today, Dobbs and Watson. Obviously, that much is clear as well. I think no one can argue that Dobbs and Watson are wide receivers one and two in terms of a two wide receiver look. I think Jane Reed will fill in somewhat there as well, which, you know, speaking of which, Jane Reed usually gets snaps out of the slot or he got a lot of snaps out of the slot so far in OTAs, but today he did get some outside snap, which he had versatility in college. He played outside, he played inside through the three years at Michigan State, so he definitely has that versatility. So nice to see the Packers working him in in different spots. As for the starting offensive line, for the first time in OTAs, David Bakhtiari started at left tackle in team drills. He's been lining up there, obviously, um, in warmups, but this was the first time seeing him in team drills uh, starting at left tackle. Then Elton Jenkins at left guard, Josh Myers at center, John Runyon Jr. at right guard, and Josh Nyman at right tackle. We've seen Zach, Tom, and Josh Nyman kind of rotate in and out with the number ones. For the number two offensive line, it was Caleb Jones at left tackle, Sean Ryan at left guard, Zach, Tom at center. So there definitely is kind of something going on there, in my opinion, where Zach, Tom could very well, you know, end up starting at center over Josh Myers. And I've said this all offseason. And it's just because I, I believe getting your five best offensive linemen out there is the best idea. So if that includes Josh Nyman, then Zach Tom's likely going to have to fit in at center. So if you believe Josh Nyman is a better offensive lineman than Josh Myers, then you likely have Zach Tom at center. So I think that's why they've been kind of rotating Zach Tom around and why he got snaps at center today. Royce Newman was uh, right guard number two and Luke Tenuta was right tackle number two. As for the starting defense, they opened up in nickel. I believe the last practice they opened up in their base 3-4. So obviously in nickel, they're going to add a cornerback and drop a defensive lineman here. So the two defensive linemen instead of the three was TJ Slayton and Kenny Clark, the third being Devontae Wide if they were to be in base. As for the edge rushers, it was Lucas Van Ness and Preston Smith. They have also been rotating that second edge guy with Rashawn Gary out. Um, I think the first practice we saw Enigbare start, last practice we saw Holland start, this one we see Lucas Van Ness. Really like them giving each one of these guys, you know, plenty of opportunity to go in and start at least in practice. I think these guys will be getting a lot of snaps early in the season, even if Rashawn Gary does come back he's going to be on a pitch count even if he does come back week one inside linebackers no surprise here Devondre Campbell and Quay Walker as for the cornerbacks with Razul, Jair and Stokes still out it's kind of been the same look every single time 
um, Ballantyne and Shamar Jean Charles on the outside and Keyshawn Nixon in the slot at corner. As for the safeties, it's been the same opening look to start practice. All three, Darnell Savage and Rudy Ford, but they surely have been rotating a lot of guys in at safety with Tarvarius Moore and John Owens, both of the free agents they signed this offseason also got snaps with the ones. Now moving on to the main takeaways from today's practice, and we'll start with the offense. The Jordan Love to Romeo Dobbs connection continues. They've started to build a lot of good chemistry in these OTAs, uh, so nice to see there. He had a nice corner route touchdown from Jordan Love, really impressive throw an impressive uh, catch. Jordan Love had a very strong day, um, except for the last play. The last play in the two-minute drill, he kind of rolled to the right, threw a back across his body um, to the middle of the field, kind of a duck ball, and it ended with an interception to Tarvarius Moore. So the last two practices, we saw ups and downs from Jordan Love. Today, he was very, very solid until kind of the end. He had a good hard count where yeah, his offensive line did jump a few times, but his hard count was good, and he looked really, really solid up until that last play. We expected this. There's ups and downs from Jordan Love, and that's going to continue all the way out through the offseason and into the regular season. So we can't, you know, overanalyze the downs or the ups from Jordan Love because it's a learning process, and this is his first year as a full-time starter. Packers rookie quarterback Sean Clifford probably had his best day at practice yet. I know I have a lot of Sean Clifford fans in the comments in most of these videos, so I'll give him a little love in this video. Um, he went 9 for 11, completing his first seven passes in a row in the two-minute drill, also th throwing two touchdowns in two-minute drills to both Malik Heath and Jeff Cotton uh, for touchdowns. Both of those wide receivers had great days today. Cotton scored twice, and Malik Heath had multiple um, grabs on offense. It's going to be a fight for the last uh, two to three wide receiver spots. I don't see Malik Heath or Jeff Cotton, you know, making the final 53-man roster, but it's still going to be a fight for the, the two to three spots they're going to hold on the practice squad because it's still such a young wide receiver room. So even getting a spot on the practice squad, I think is going to be very important because your number could get called at any moment due to, you know, underproduction by another guy that's on the 53 or any type of injury. It's a super young squad with a lot of unproven guys. Um, there's really only a few guys that have uh, any snaps in the NFL. So it's a big question mark there. So just getting a spot on the 53 or the practice squad is very important for these wide receivers. The last take away on offense is running back Tyler Goodson is still impressing. He's been very impressive throughout the entirety of the OTAs and currently is looking like running back three. Now it is OTA, so there's no pads. There's pretty much no context. So you can't really um, look at a running back correctly, right? Because if there's no contact or tackling, it's like, how can you really evaluate a running back too much outside of his quickness, burst and vision, which Tyler Goodson has looked great in all three of those uh, so far in OTAs. Great burst, quickness, and good hands. I'm a huge Tyler Goodson guy. If you guys remember last year when we signed him as an undrafted free agent, I was really high on him, and I was saying this guy could make the 53-man roster. And that continues throughout this offseason as well, and I believe he would be an excellent running back three. I know they drafted Lou Nichols in the seventh, which I also do like, and they have Patrick Taylor, who has a lot of experience. But in my opinion, I think Tyler Goodson's going to be that running back three. As for the defensive takeaways, firstly, Devontae Wyatt had a good practice today. He didn't start because the Packers were in nickel, but he rotated in a lot. He had multiple pressures or slash would-be sacks. And as I stated earlier, there was a lot of rotation at that safety position. It started with Darnell Savage and Rudy Ford, which has been the case all of the OTA so far. But as I said earlier, Tarverius Moore and John Owens um, getting plenty of snaps with the ones as well. And then, of course, Tavarius Moore had that interception at the end of practice on Jordan Love. So he's been impressive as well. Kind of been that ball hawk type of safety. He's gotten snaps next to uh, Rudy Ford. Ford, and John Owens has been brought in to get snaps next to Darnell Savage. So they've been rotating guys a lot. And I think that's really good because safety, I think, on this football team is the biggest question mark. Who's going to be the guys, not, not only to start the year at safety, but continue at safety throughout the entirety of the season. Rookie Anthony Johnson Jr. had a nice pass breakup today. There's a lot of players in that safety room, but there's no true, in my eyes, like 100% starter type of safety. I believe Rudy Ford is that guy, and he will start at safety. And I think Darnell Savage if he can turn it around, can be a nice piece on that defense. But there's no true one guy where you're going, okay, this is 100% going to be our starting safety for this year and the future. Pa previous years, you had Adrian Amos. It's like, obviously, that guy's going to start at safety. But there really isn't that guy this year. So I like that they're rotating a lot of guys in and out to really 
start to understand what that position could become. Packers seventh round rookie cornerback Carrington Valentine out of Kentucky also had um, a nice day. Corey Valentine, yeah, it's very similar last names. It gets confusing sometimes. Uh, did get the start today and had to start the last three days or three open days of OTAs. But Valentine with a nice day today had multiple pass breakups on wide receiver Romeo Dobbs. And then finally, the edge rushers did a really nice job today on containing the run, not allowing it to go outside. Both Lucas Van Ness and Kingsley and Agbare had nice run stops today it's going to be very important this edge group to be able to also contain the run not only rush the passer which obviously will help this defense but contain the run the Packers haven't had a too good of a run defense the past few years I believe giving up like 5.0 plus yards per carry the last two seasons so I think that is a big reason why sometimes the defense struggles is allowing a big run on the first and second downs and it's a very easy manageable third down you want to put teams into third and unmanageable third and long which starts with run defense so the Packers really uh need to get better at that and I, and I and I do believe they have the talent there um, I think if TJ Slayton takes another jump and of course we have Kenny Clark and Devontae Wyatt maybe takes a sophomore jump and those edge guys really mesh in that room I think we could have a, a much better run defense this year but that does it for all the main takeaways the final day of OTAs open to the media like I said mini camp starts next week June 13th through the 15th I don't know which days if any are open to media I would assume one or two will be open to the media so like I said all that information and the highlights and the recaps will be right here on this channel so make sure to go down and click subscribe if you haven't already but that about does it for this video i appreciate everyone watching hope you have a nice day i'll catch you on the next one and as always go back up